I remember, Josh Rebel, when you were on the podcast at the start of the season, we came to high tech, oh, and God. I said Marcus Armstrong and Yuri Vips. And then you said Marcus Armstrong, Yuri Vips, high tech, like it was the most unlucky trio of names that you could put together. I think we can summarize, <laughs> summarize their season away from the obvious thing with uh, certain Yuri by the pit stops this team have put out and therefore the amount of points they've thrown away. And I don't know if that's misfortune or what. Unfulfilled potential would be my summary of this team with a pretty A-star lineup who then didn't have an A-star performance. Am I being harsh here or is that a fair summary of the high-tech team for 2022, Josh? If you're what if you're listening, watching, Josh almost fell off his chair there. <laughs> Those two poor guys, like, yeah, I described them as just being sort of curse magnets. They were this year, um, and I mean, like, for Yuri Vips this year at the start of this whole sort of year, um, what like on pace he just looked on it. You know, like all the way up to Baku on pure pace, he looked like the one who could challenge Drugovich with the title. Then after Baku, the incident happened. Um, and I'm not saying the two are directly linked here, but after that, it just like momentum stopped. Like for whatever reason, um, he didn't have that killer pace that he did before. Um and you could put it down to the incident or the fact that at Baku, when he lost that race, that wasn't down to a Mechachrome moment. That was all him. He just threw the, he just threw the race away. And that's when you're leading a race. And I know Halga was right behind him, but he had a two second buffer. He was relatively, he was relatively managing the gap. You could argue that Dennis was catching up to him, but still to throw that away and at the end of the day, second is better than nothing at all. Um, threw away a lot of points. You could argue that at that point, he was starting to go out of contention for the championship. It was just crap to see that, you know? Like, um, That's not so we go on this. We also had the incidents at Imola, I think the feature race, the, and then also throw, in throwing Spain. that away. He, th- he, yeah, threw, just, he threw multiple wins, he th- well, multiple he high threw scoring a, positions away. Well, yeah, because I don't know if he was going to win Imola, put it that way. But yeah, yeah. Um, it, was, it was still points, you know? Mm. At the end of the day, what well, Sergeant and Lawson were separated by one point, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Now, if you think of the, it's the stuff that happened throughout the year, you could just say, oh, this cost him the championship, that cost him. It's like, it's a championship. It's 11 rounds Formula 2. In my opinion, when it comes to like championships or games saying, oh, we lost because of this, this, that. It's like, if you were the better one, you shouldn't have been there in the first place, you know, more often than not. Although the season was kind of different. So Vips threw away X amount of points, which was, you know, relatively unforgivable, especially how he did those things. Um, as for Marcus Armstrong, um, he's sort of like a little bit under the radar because for a while he was in contention for you no know, good results. He was well positioned in the championship. It's like, okay, wait, what the hell? Okay. I guess consistency is on your side. Um, but then again, like it's your number three for right Armstrong in the championship, you know? Hey, what was that? Sorry. It's your number three for Marcus in the championship this year. And that for me was what, I looked down on him for that because you have Djokovic in year three battling for the league. He finished, where did he finish in the championship in the end? 13. Yeah, I, I understand I understand that. But we do know, like as we said before, it's not quite equal. You judge against your teammates. So how did he do against and Vips? It, he lost against Vips. Vips, it'll be 1114 points. Uh, Marcus he, Armstrong, he, he did. 93. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. But like relatively, he wasn't like being smoked. True. Um, he's just not quite on that level. Um. But, you know, uh, he's given up on F2, it seems. Like, he's bound for IndyCar, which I think will serve him well, you know? He should do well there, which, you know, 
it'd be a nice change of pace out of coming <clears throat> from a series where he's just being served lemons. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's just like a lot of potential for high tech this year. And it sort of just in the end of it, it eventuated to nothing at the start of the year. Like after the first couple of rounds, would you have expected Vips and Armstrong to finish in the end where they did? Not at all. No. And this is, this is generally where I think about the unfulfilled potential, the potential of that team on paper to me at the start of this season was like, this is one that could battle for the championship, both in drivers and teams. And it just never really worked out. Tyler, I really like when he's on the podcast, Vips was such a good guy to talk to. Marcus is not joining this podcast, but it's brilliant to watch on another podcast, a rival podcast. On the racetrack hasn't worked out for them this year. Bloody good blokes again. But yeah, talk us through their year. Vips' season has been the definition of painful to watch. Um, when you have a driver that's so talented, who was at the beginning, as Josh said, the top of the Red Bull stable, and then ends up the season apart from that, um, you realise that something must... You know, the point is that it's not just a case of what happened, I don't think. Um, I think Red Bull realised that Vips was a driver who had so much potential, but might not have been able to have the capacity to control what was holding him back. He admitted earlier in the season to me that he he had an issue with his aggression in terms of that he found it difficult to reserve himself in races, in positions where he could see points, a podium, victory. He just was gunning so hard for it because he believed that he had the ability to do that, that he just pushed it over the edge. Um, we mentioned with Nassani about his crash in Imola. Vips did it just the same. You could argue Vips was even worse because of the fact that it's Yuri Vips. This is a guy who has won races before, who has or should have won way more races. But point is, is that Vips' season has been one of, of real frustration for anybody who wants people with talent to get to the top. And then when he did what he did, it hit him not only where it hurts in terms of you know the relationship with Red Bull, but it also hit him mentally as well in terms of he didn't bounce back and you're right Josh when you say that it happened at a time that completely correlates with the rest of the season he had he obviously began to pick it up again towards the end got that um, podium in Monza but by then it's too late and he'd already his focus was already way off to America um, just literally towards the top of the list of drivers who should be an F1 but aren't um, mm -hmm. and the way it happened and why he was cut off means that he will probably be forgotten to a degree, I think, which at the start of the year, you wouldn't even thought of that. Marcus, Josh, I, I don't I don't even know where to put either of these drivers. I'm really fascinated. I don't either. You, guys are you think I do? <laughs> like, I don't know where to put Marcus because he didn't necessarily do much wrong, but I can't exactly give him an A plus for that, can I? B minus, maybe. Tyler? I think you can't give Armstrong anything higher than a C plus on the basis that you can't live off sprint races for a year. It doesn't work <laughs> like that. You, at some point, you have to say, I can pass you in a feature race because that was why Armstrong has struggled recently is because of the fact that he's capable once he's at the front of holding the lead. But in terms of coming through the pack, it seems like there's an issue in that in that regard and i just don't think i can give him a b minus i'd say c plus i think josh this will be the last time possibly we'll speak about marcus on the feeder series podcast in terms of being in the feeder series do you think c plus is where we're going to end this guy's feeder series career oh it's hard it's, it's really really difficult to judge just yeah because i i, I don't know it, i'm in that sort of like it could be b minus it could be c plus so I'm not saying I'm going to give him a C plus. All I'll say is that Tyler's got more than a point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, put a C plus on with a caveat that Josh has got his uh, <laughs> nationality bias, I'm going to call it. Um, yeah. No nationality Last bias <laughs> on Yuri Vips. Yeah. Passport, yeah. <laughs> Yuri Vips. Let's keep off track activity separate. And to be fair, there's something 
equally controversial throwing it away on track activities from this year. Tyler, where are we going to pay him? It's, it's around the same level, I think. I've got to be honest, I think, I don't know if I'm grading it slightly differently here. Um, also, just interesting to note that both of them are looking to go to Indy next year as a pep sort of together. So it's interesting to see how their futures will go. Um, but for Vips, I actually can't give him the same as Armstrong. And even though I, Vips had the better season and is the better driver, in my opinion, the catastrophe that was his season in terms of um, what could have been, I mean, I've got a Twitter thread here that I've just been reading. And basically it says that without the main issues that he had in the season, he would have finished pretty much on par with what Drogovic ended up getting, which just shows you how good his season could have been if he just had one a, a clean year. Um, I've got to give him like a, like a, like a C minus maybe. It, it's just it's so disappointing. I can't give him it for, for how well he started. The drop off is so bad that it, it, it really does haunt it for me. That is uh, harsher than I expected. Josh, your thoughts? Damn, you really, really hurt him. <laughs> Bloody Kick more. a man when he's down, Tyler. Uh, no, it's not so much kicking a man when he's down, it's kicking a man when he's freaking dead. I <laughs> think that's how bad it is. Um... Oh, yeah, it was a catastrophic season. Absolutely piloted into a hillside. That's how bad the season was. But we saw the potential. You know, we saw the speed that he had, which is why it's difficult to throw him down that low. Um, C average. Tyler, you're nodding there. So I think C is fair. We kind of upped. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. This this is the high tech as a whole was a yeah. I'm right. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. 